Welcome back to The Point. Sheryl Sandberg, who's the COO of Facebook, wants to ensure that there's more equality for women in the workplace. In fact, as you guys all know, she's trying to push women to be leaders. And one way that she's trying to do that is to ban certain words that might insult women. Take a look. This is ban bossy. Take one. Pushy. Stubborn. Stubborn. Pushy. Pushy. Stubborn. Stubborn. Bossy. 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 When I was growing up, I was called bossy. I think the word bossy is just a swasher. Being labeled something matters. By middle school, girls are less interested in leadership than boys. And that's because they worry about being called bossy. We need to tell them it's OK to be ambitious. We need to help them lean in. Words matter. Let's just ban the word bossy. And encourage girls to lead. To be strong and be ambitious. Listen to your own voice. There are no limits. There to be you. You can change the world. Let's ban bossy. Be brave. Be you. Ban bossy. Join us to ban bossy. I'm not bossy. I'm the boss. Encourage girls to lead. Take the pledge at banbossy.com. Okay, so I despise this, and I hate it because I think that it makes women look like they're whiny, and it actually sets them back a lot. Because now we're gonna we're gonna be the language police and decide you know what we like and what we don't like. Sheryl Sandberg was called bossy by one of her educators when she was younger, and it really hurt her feelings. And I feel like she's kind of held on to that until today. And I think that her cause is an important one, but I think the strategy is a little weird. Um, I don't know if it's actually going to achieve what she wants to achieve. But I want to get your thoughts, Jenny, because you're the other woman on the show right now. Yeah, I'm still trying to recover from that video. <laughs> um, I just want to know, has it occurred to anyone else that it's a little bossy to tell people <laughs> not to say bossy like this is outrageous yeah. I am I'm like actually disgusted by the it makes me I'm like almost shaking I'm yeah. so mad I find it unbelievable that your tactic to try to empower women is, is to, protect them. to protect them and make them like delicate little flowers who can't handle being called bossy yeah. guess what I was called bossy when I was a little kid and I I'm glad because sometimes when you're bossy, you don't get what you want. Yeah. And I, I just think that we need to teach women and men to be better leaders and to lead people in a way that they want to do the things that you want of them instead of just, you know, barking at them and telling them what to do. I actually think that's a good lesson to learn I, as a child. Yeah, I think a good lesson, I mean, I don't know if this is a good idea with all parents and their kids, but when I was growing up, I mean, I got a bunch of really bad insults as a, as a girl. You know, I was a little bossy. I wanted to control certain things. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. I was bossy, right? And I remember being super sensitive about it, and I would go to my mom and be like, Mom, they called me bossy, or whatever it was, whatever the word was. And she was like, so? She's like, are you kicking ass in life? And I was like, I think so. She's like, then stop crying. <laughs> and I was like, oh, OK. And it, it made me realize, like, y you need a lesson in not caring what other people think yes. about you. You got to work hard. You got to do things that you think uh, will help you succeed in life. And that's it. People are going to hate you no matter what. You could be the best person on the planet, and people are still going to insult you. You can't ban words as a result of that. Uh, political correctness, and I, I work at a college, so I know all about it. Um, is often very conservative with people not understanding how it's conservative. And this is a classic example of that. So what is good about being a boss, first of all, right? I mean, I, you know, I have a son. I don't have a daughter. But if I had a daughter, I, I would not be interested in pushing her to become a COO of a corporation or a mayor of a city or, God forbid, the president of the United States where she would have to murder and incarcerate and deport people. Um, I, I think that we need to call into question leadership itself as a matter of fact and one of the nice things about what you see women doing now they're going into college in larger and larger numbers but you see in polls and in various ways you see that women are sort of not that interested in taking leadership positions the liberal magazine the nation just was wringing its hands about this and i said maybe it's because women understand that it sucks to be a boss maybe that's what we should talk about especially in the society but maybe forever 
Let's talk about what it is to be a boss and why many, many people don't want to be a boss, and let's let the bossy people boss us, right? Right, I, but <laughs> I see a really big problem with that, right? So one of the biggest issues I see in the country right now is political apathy, and, and, and leadership when it comes to protesting something that Americans don't like. So for instance, this whole issue of NSA spying, right? Why aren't Americans getting up and arguing that, hey, you know what, we're not gonna take this shit anymore. We don't like it, you can't indiscriminately collect data on us. We don't have leaders in place to give the government a huge middle finger and say, fuck you, we're not going to let this happen anymore. I think that that's a really, really big problem. So if you want to have a discussion about leaders in terms of CEO CEOs, uh, then OK, then I think you make a really interesting argument. But women are underrepresented when it comes to Congress, right? But, but the NSA has been totally discredited. And that was not because of leaders. It was because the people rose up and said, this is terrible. But That's they're still th doing it. That was it. a leaderless movement that was, has been very, very effective. No one, the NSA has no credibility now. And that's because the people in large numbers on their own without leaders said right. no. Occupy was a leaderless movement. Absolutely. And it failed as a result of that. Well, <laughs> I mean, I, sure I love, and I'm one of the biggest supporters of Occupy. I loved it, but the fact that it didn't have enough um, people organizing it, and it didn't have at least one spokesperson to give a clear, concise message as to what they were achieving, led to the media discrediting discrediting them. It brought into the mainstream discourse, whether you agree with it or not. It brought into the mainstream discourse all these questions about corporate power and corporatism and government control of, you know, Wall Street, et cetera, and vice versa. Um, that's a successful movement in my view. That's actually a very successful cultural movement. It changed the way we think about our society without leaders. So I actually disagree with you. Well, we had a conversation, but that didn't actually translate into any policy. I mean, the same abuses are still true, are still and happening. There's some, you know, and of course, and then, you know, there's some very obvious defects in this video. Uh, of course, combating sexism and misogyny is a very important thing, and especially in this society. Um, but you know, seeing Condoleezza Rice in that video, I mean, maybe she should ask the women of Iraq how they feel about equality. You know, probably a, a million mothers who lost children uh, in that war. Um, so these are the people that are holding up as women leaders. You too can be a war criminal. Um, but you know, I, I understand the sentiment and why people may agree with it. You know, as a man, I understand that if I walk into any room or classroom or workplace or anything, if I stand up and I'm super bossy, they're going to be like, wow, that is an assertive leader right mm -hmm. there. Uh, and people are going to think I'm great for it. Um, but if my counterpart, who's a woman, displays even 50% of that assertiveness, uh, they're going to be called bossy. They're going to be called, you know, things like that. Um, and yeah. so, so I acknowledge that. And I, and I am completely for smashing all of that in the most aggressive of ways, uh, in a cultural way like this campaign is trying, you know, like allowing, you know, really creating social stigma against people who uh, want to use these types of words and put these types of labels on people. Um, but Sandberg, the one leading this, has some really serious things. You know, talking about uh, equality for women. I mean, she's very much for uh, the inequality in the workplace for women in the developing world working in sweatshops. I mean, she's not talking about equality for them. Um, and so I think Sandberg's approach to this is saying, yes, it's a, it's a sexist, it's a misogynist world. We're going to do all these things. But the way that you combat it is by being a relentless, cutthroat capitalist like myself. And I don't think that's the lesson that we need Jenny to Jenny gets the last word. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think that one of the really important things about this is the fact that it all comes back to this idea that we are sheltering mm -hmm. our children. And the reality is, it's a tough world. And if you want to make a difference in that world, you better be ready to bring it in that world. And if you live in a false world where everybody gets a trophy and nobody says bossy and everyone can be whatever they want, you're not going to do that. Yeah. I just believe that. I 100% agree with you. And I just want to close uh, this topic by saying, look, there's this huge double standard when it comes to men and women in the media, right? So let's say Cenk Uger, who's the, the lead host of The Young Turks, he gets fired up on the show on a regular basis. He, he yells. Um, he uses cuss words sometimes. I mean, he gets really fired up. And people will say, hey, you know what? He's a really passionate host. If I do the same thing, I'm an emotional host. Mm -hmm. So it's funny how the wording changes depending depending on the gender of the host. But those types of double standards exist. And I'm not going to go around and say, no, I'm going to ban comments because I don't like those comments and I don't like people calling me uh, emotional. If that's their perspective, that's your perspective. I'm trying to give you information. You don't like my delivery. You can go ahead and watch somewhere else.